Hello everyone, my name is Rafael Sanchez, I'm an application engineer out there and today I want to show you how you can use to inactivate for your system of system simulation considering multiple domains, different levels of fidelity and starting from a simple method of modeling and building up from there increasing the complexity and fidelity of your models. The example I want to show you it's a very small and simple microgrid which consists of a load, in this case a data center, some solar cells, uh, a set of batteries, and well, the connection to the grid. Let me show you around each of these blocks and how you can put some of it together for yourself. Okay, so first of all, we have to look at how we're getting the data that represents the, co the conditions in the outside environment. Namely, I'm reading for, from a CSV the conditions of temperature and solar radiance from Mexico City throughout one year. How do I do that? I'm using the CSV reader block here in Inactivate. I have the name of the file here in my initialization script. Over here, I have set up that my, tem my temperature and solar radiance file is this one. So I have it here. Let me show you how it looks like, just so you know. I downloaded the data. What I care about is the solar radiance, temperature, and here I've added an index for outputting the signal into the twin activate environment as a time series. Okay. Once you have this data in your environment, the next step is to feed it to the other blocks that are going to use it, the other systems. We have the load getting temperature data and we have the solar cells getting both sunlight and temperature data. Let's look first at the load. We're using temperature data here because in a data center you want to keep things cool enough. So depending on the temperature, if it's higher, it's going to take more energy for us to keep it at the temperature we want, right? I'm doing this in a very simple way. Of course, there would be much of complexities that are not included so far, but this is a good first approximation. We're having a load that has, a, in this case, it's a constant load and it generates heat depending on the difference between the temperature that we want to have inside and the actual outside temperature, we're going to have an energy requirement as well. And we're using that enemy requirement, the heat that we want to get out that gets generated inside and the heat that we want to keep out from the external world, we're using, well, we're modeling a simple HVAC system for taking that heat out. It's very simple. We just consider the heat that we want to keep out and add some losses to capture the inefficiencies of the system. And then we add both of those together to know the actual power required by our load. As I said, this is a first approximation, but you can take this as far as you want using other products for co-simulation or using lookup tables or using sort of a more complex and integral approach using the blocks available in to inactivate. Let's look at the solar cells now. For this, I used a simple lookup table that is getting data from a CSV in which I just get, depending on the outside temperature and the solar radiance, the maximum power that can be provided by these cells. It's a very simple system and I just wanted to have something functional and at the same time to consider realistic numbers, right? Um, this is a game that I'm using to multiply the number of cells that I want to have in my system. As I already showed very briefly, here in my initialization script, I characterize the system. In this part is where I take care of the solar cells. This is the file where I'm reading the data from. I'm reading the data here, splitting into the fields that I want to extract from the file. And then I'm just setting the number of photovoltaic cells that I want to consider for my system. Now, let's look at this lookup table. I'm just taking the data for irradiance and temperature from this file here. Let me show you. Very simple file. Depending on the temperature and depending on the irradiance, I'm going to have maximum power available to be given by each cell. As you might know, the higher the temperature, the hardest it's going to be for the cell to output the same power for a given level of irradiance. So let's not delve into that, but that's how we are modeling the solar cells here. Now let's look at the model of the batteries. Here we have it. It's a very simple model that I put together using just block diagrams in Activate, nothing fancy. And well, we have the characteristics of our system here. We have the number of battery cells that we're using. 
we have the maximum charge and discharge rate possible by these cells and we have the maximum energy storage that these cells can store, right? So I've just added a saturation block that means it's got to going to keep the discharge and recharge rate within this range and I'm using a simple integrator to capture the charging and discharging of these batteries. Of course, I'm multiplying by the maximum capacity for energy storage from these batteries and the number of batteries that we're using. So when this state of charge is greater than zero, that is when there's energy available in our batteries to provide to the system, then we provide it. And then we subtract from the current power demand. It's a very simple approach. I'm not saying by any means that it should be my final approach if I were to model this further, but works for now, right? And that's it, the grid. I don't care about the grid right now. Perhaps you could add some pricing scheme or perhaps you could add some uh, external input disturbance, whatnot. For now, we don't care about that. So the last step is for us to just run and visualize the results. Plenty of information at the same time, but here we have an overview of our whole system. I am modeling, even though I have data for one year, I am showing the results for one month here, temperature, irradiance, the power required by the HVAC to work properly, the power produced by the solar cells given the environmental conditions, the power provided or required by the batteries, the state of charge of these batteries, the power required after the solar cells, and whatnot. If you want to have a further look, please download the model and play around with it yourselves. Thanks for watching.